Well, good morning. It's uh, December 20th, I think, right now. Back to being chilly again. We had uh, 50 degree temperatures, mid 50s, and rain. And as you can see, the snow is pretty much all gone. Very bizarre, very strange winter so far. <laughs> uh, but strange winter goes along with a strange world pretty well. Um, but uh, recently just got done with this book right here. Got it at a used bookstore. Sun Tzu, The Art of War. And uh, it was one of the big textbooks, I guess you could say, or one of the philosophical things for people in the military, officers and things like that. And I understand why, because there's definitely some interesting things in it. Uh, my wife, you know, she told me that when she was in the military, she heard a lot about the art of war and everything. Um, hopefully the wind's not blowing too bad here. A little bit of a breeze this morning, but um, some things I would say, yeah, make good sense. And some other things that are just philosophical slop in the art of war. Um, flowing through the low areas, you know, like a river or something. You know, when the enemy has the high ground and, and other times you should have the high ground and sometimes you should care about your troops and sometimes you shouldn't care. If you care too much, then you're weak as a leader and some of the stuff's just philosophical nonsense in my opinion. But uh, an interesting thing has happened recently, if you're not aware of this. Um, Hollywood, I don't call it Hollywood, um, Hollywood, the people that serve Satan, um, they came out with this. They're going to be coming out with a movie in April of this coming year. Uh, it's called Civil War or something. I, don't, I think it's something about Civil War. Whether it's called Civil War or whatever, I don't remember. But I um, saw the trailer for it. And uh, it brought up an interesting point, which I had not previously thought of. And that is because I was thinking about the thing of how will a civil, civil war work here in America? How is it going to... Um, how will it all work out? How are we going to have the sides split? Obviously, north and south isn't going to work anymore. Um, at least not totally. Uh, but the secession movement is what this movie uses. They, they play up on that whole thing. That there are states that want to secede from the federal government control. And uh, I'm seeing some hinting at that among certain channels. That that's what would need to be done in order to regain freedom. We would have red states and blue states, essentially, which is a problem because I'm in a blue state. Uh, you know, so northern Maine is a very conservative area, but southern Maine is a liberal, you know, nut farm, essentially. Um, no offense to anybody that lives in southern Maine, but you know what I'm talking about if you're down there. Uh, Maine is a liberal state, unfortunately. Uh, New Hampshire is a good conservative state, but, you know, it's one in you know, surrounded by a bunch of blue. But the concept of this movie is, I think that they said that there's something like 19 states have seceded and then they're, I guess, going against the federal government and the federal government's trying to exterminate them or whatever else. Um, that's a possibility. That's a very real possibility. And of course it would be divided. The division that we see right now over racial lines, um, wasps like myself, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, we're getting really sick and tired of the uh, black racism that's come against us. Uh, you can say all kinds of nasty stuff about white people and it's just fine. And, and of course it's not all blacks or whatever else, you know, don't get me wrong. But uh, there's, it's definitely there. That racist element is there going against, you know, white people. We're called domestic terrorists and things and we're not even doing anything. <laughs> oh, just we like our guns and oh, that makes you a terrorist. No, that makes us smart. Okay, that gives us wisdom. But um, you have the racial division. You have political division. You have people that think that all guns should be banned and that we should take them by force. Uh, that's a violation of the Second Amendment. You have people that hate Bible-believing Christians. You have people that are pro-pervert of all different types. Uh, I can't even keep keep up with it anymore. I mean, all the different things that have come out. So you have all these different um, things where people are going to fight against each other. And what I learned, one of the things I learned from the art of war, which lines up with scripture, is the Bible talks about, you know, a king sitting down and counting the cost and saying, okay, do I have enough with my men to go against this other kingdom? Well, that's 
right there in that as well. Um, and, you know, it's just good sense. Uh, war is very costly, not just in the, in the emotional thing, but, uh, and with the lives of men, but also financially. Uh, yes, you can make a lot of money if you're in the, a defense contractor, military industrial complex, but you have to figure out all this stuff. Um, and if you don't have enough money, if there's no way that you can make money from it, what's the return on investment, you know, for going to war, then you have to consider some things, you know. So what would a civil war do to America? Well, it would solve a lot of our problems, certainly. Um, there are people that just can't get it through their thick heads that America was founded on certain principles. And uh, we're supposed to have a, you know, a, a Christian ethic here in this country where there's supposed to be respect for the Bible and respect for the Ten Commandments, which shouldn't really be that difficult. Ten Commandments are just good standard, uh, whether or not you believe in God or whatever. Um, you know, not stealing, not murdering, not, uh, you know, all the different things that the Ten Commandments are. I've done studies on it, just trying to stay on topic here. Um, so people just want to overthrow what our country is. Well, those of us that are here, that have been here since before the Revolutionary War, which my ancestors have been here uh, for a very long time, and it isn't just a thing of, oh, okay, well, you want to change the country? Oh, okay, yeah, sure, we'll do that. You know, no. <laughs> um, somebody, you know, come up to me and say, I've had people attack me over the years, you know, you need to shave your beard, Denlinger, it looks terrible, or whatever else. <laughs> Who are you? You know, my wife likes my beard. I like my beard. My son likes my beard. Uh, enough said. There's no scripture saying I shouldn't have a beard. Boom. Done. Over. Your opinions don't matter. You know? But people come out and, oh, you know, your beard's terrible. It's a bad witness or something. Go take a hike. You know, I could care less what you, or I couldn't care less uh, what you think about my beard. <laughs> but uh, that's the way people are with this nation. Oh, we're just going to come here and we're going to say, uh, no, there is no more Second Amendment. Uh, uh, no. Well, there's lots of violence, so we have to take it away. Uh, the, the violence is, is why, if there's an increase in violence, that's why we have guns. To protect ourselves. Um, you know, I was saying this to my wife last night. I was, we were talking about this whole thing, and I said, you know, growing up, I only knew a couple guys that had AR-15s, but it was kind of a, what's that for, you know? And guys would take their guns to, to a high school, loaded, out in their vehicle, and the teachers knew about it. Why? Well, because you're going hunting afterwards. A bunch of guys get together and go out and do some squirrel hunting or rabbit or pheasant or whatever else type of hunting or go deer hunting together. There wasn't anything, you know, about that. Um, so, but now, I mean, there's just guys that have all kinds of, you know, arsenals. I mean, I know guys locally here that they've got 50 BMGs. Browning machine gun, you know, BMG. Um, but uh, 50 caliber rifles. And you think, why do you need a thing like that? Well, because it's getting a lot more dangerous in this nation. That's why. And um, people, these anti-Americans, they need to get a hold of that. We're not going away. You can't just uh, legislate us away or get the right people in and whatever else. It's going to head to war. So uh, just weird to see that I've been talking about civil war now for a while. And all of a sudden now they're coming out with a Hollywood movie. It's just going to try to further divide the people. Funny, too, because China, communist China, good old uh, uh, the Chai Coms or whatever, Chinese communists, um, they own big portions of Hollywood. Huh. You wouldn't think that they'd have a hand in a movie that would drive people against each other, get Americans to start killing each other, would you? No, that's conspiracy stuff. That's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, divide and conquer is one of the things that you'll learn about when you study the philosophy of warfare. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so, interesting times ahead, brethren. Um, if you're not a brother or sister in the Lord, I suggest you get things worked out between you and God. Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. Um, you have to believe in the Scriptures, and you believe that He died to pay for your sins, and you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, you say, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. 
Uh, I believe what the Bible says. I believe the Bible is the greatest book out there, King James Bible. And uh, I want to be saved. I want to know that if I die in what's coming, that I'm going to have an eternity in heaven with my Creator. You need to get that whole thing sorted out before things really fall apart because they're about to. All right. Um, and again, like I've said, we've been at war now for a while. And um, all the guys in the military academies, West Point and whatever else, um, I don't think a lot of them have been trained for this type of warfare. This uh, fifth generation warfare, I think they call it. I did a video on it a while back. And it's, it's new, you know. Again, we were talking about that this morning. Um, you know, they'd, they'd get a soldier in the past and they'd say, what's your name, rank, and serial number? And the guy would, they'd have to torture him to get the, you know, that information out. Now they can just hack the soldier's phone while he's garrisoned in, you know, uh, some base here in America. They hack the guy's phone, they can get all that information for themselves. You know, all the, all the stuff that he's supposed to be doing and his orders and everything else, they just hack it off the guy's iPhone or whatever. It's insane. You know, we'll just do identity theft and take the soldier's identity from him. You know, and then seeing what our military is becoming too with all the perverts and the, you know, Gen Z's going in there and everything else. And just messing it all up. We're in trouble. Okay, this nation's falling. It's falling. And um, again, uh, to the brethren out there, if you're saved, you have to understand some things, very practical things. Okay, right now my hands are freezing, starting to turn a little bit red because it's very cold. It's in the teens out here and blowing a little bit. Um, practical things. I have to go get some gloves. I didn't bring my gloves out this morning. I need to put some gloves on or do something else to get, my, to get some warmth into my hands again. Um, it's, there's no sin in understanding practical things like that. If you see bad times coming, you can't just say, well, Lord will protect me, Lord will provide for me. Um, Christians have had to fight down through the centuries. And the more guns are in the hands of Christian people in this country, the less crime there's going to be. That's just science, okay? Uh, I was in a gun shop yesterday, and uh, you know what? You know how many times it was robbed in the time that I was there? Not at all. Zero. Uh, nobody comes in there. You don't hear people being held up and, and mugged and have their money taken from them at gun ranges. Um, gun shops are one of the safest places to be. And the guys at the gun shop I go to, they're armed all the time. Um, and uh, <laughs> So, yeah. But uh, there's some things to think about, brethren. And if you're lost, there's some things I want you to think about, too. All right? Um, but we're headed for war. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this new war movie that's coming out, the Civil War thing. Do you think that they're going to do it that way? Secede, different states will secede, and then there will be a war between the states. Maybe that's the way that they'll do it. Line of demarcation that they will use. So let me know your thoughts. See you in upcoming videos.